Greetings, everyone. I would like to start off by saying thank you for helping me reach 100k. I can't even begin to express how thankful I am for your support. I know this video is a bit late by a lot, but I've had several things come up that I was working on before I could start making this video. Seriously though, this took so long that starting off there were questions in the community page on whether there would be a plush, then the release of that plush, and then the campaign for that plush to end. Hmm. But anyways, welcome to 100k Q&A! Things are different now, so let's change up the scenery and get cozy. I asked y'all to ask me some questions on my community page, and I'm going to answer them to the best of my ability. You can also enjoy the speed paint as it goes on in the background. To start off, I would like to say that there were many questions, some repeats, so I do apologize if I missed your question. Now, let's begin. How early did you come up with the series, and how many revisions has it gone through since then? I've had the idea for the story of Vita Carnus for a couple of years. I'd say I started thinking more specific about story elements and such around two, three years ago. And it's gone through a few like little things, but nothing too big. I'd say the biggest things happened when I was making the videos themselves back... Well, it's been a little bit more than a year, so... Not too many, but it started, it started a little bit ago. What's the name of your Persona character, or if you will ever have one? So, this Persona character, this guy right here who's waving his eyes, arms, hi, hello... Uh, that's me! That's Derry Aguilla, he's me. He's here to just... Represent me. He's me. Hi. Hello. It's me. Hi. Hello. One. How did you come up with your Persona character? And two. Would you ever do a making of type video with some of your props? I would love to know how you made the mimic head for the first documentary. And three. Will we see how the different types of meat creatures interact with one another? For example, would a mimic acknowledge the meat snake at all? Really love your creations. Well, thank you. So to answer your first bit. How did I come with my Persona character? I was inspired by one of Trevor Henderson's work called The Forgotten Baby. You can see the resemblance between the two creatures. And I just sort of turned it into my profile picture and started just making him, drawing him do little funny things. And here we are now. To answer your second question, uh, I kind of do that on my Kofi page. You can go in the link in the description and see all my stuff there where I do some behind the scenes works, but if I do any specific videos for YouTube, I would do it after the series has been completed and such. And for your third bit, I can't say too much, but yep, we will get to see some interactions. What advice can you give to upcoming artists who are maybe afraid or intimidated of taking the first step in pursuing art? Big fan of your work also, by the way. So, I'd say, don't be too worried about it. Practice, practice, practice. That's the best advice I can give. Practice makes progress. You gotta start somewhere, so might as well start as soon as you can. What was the hardest lesson you had to learn while making your series? The hardest thing that I had to learn was how to deal with um, make such poor planning for Season 1, because it first started off as a fun little silly project that I was doing. But then once it started gaining traction, I'm like, oh, I should probably spend a bit more time on this, you know? So, building it up from there was a little difficult, but I think I'm starting to get the hang of things now. You can see some quality increase by the end of the season. So, yeah, I'd say just working on quality and starting to get things properly produced, if that makes any sense. Anyways, so these two are together. Will you be doing any other projects aside from Vita Carnus? I love your stuff, by the way. Can't wait for season two. Thank you, thank you. After you're done with Vita Carnus, are you planning on making other ARG video series? So, if you've seen on my community pages, I do have plans for other things, and I have plans that I've yet to share about a bunch of other stuff. 
I'm not sure if it'll be ARGs type stuff or just stories, but there is definitely more coming. Do not worry. Beta Carnus is not the only thing being made. Do you have a Patreon and or any other platform for us to throw money at you? I love the series you're doing, and you deserve all the support. Thank you so much. If you really want to throw money at me, as I mentioned before, there's a Kofi below. You get exclusive content and other things. But any sort of support, even like you just being here and watching this video is enough. So thank you, thank you. Another two combined questions. Given the multimedia presentation of the series so far, will you continue down the road of Blender work and CGI? Or more specifically, do you plan to stop using puppets? And do you intend to make the creatures shown made out of practical effect stuff, or will they lean towards CGI or a mixture of both? So do not worry, I am going to try my very hardest to stick to practical stuff. But there will also be much more CGI and Blender work involved. Those are mostly beyond like the more ambitious things that I probably can't afford or have the time to make practical stuff for. So, yeah. There will be definitely a combination of the two, but I will always try to do practical when I can. How did you get so good at drawing, and how did you come up with the creature design and storyline? So, for drawing, I just, I just drew. I drew a bunch, like I said before, practice, 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 practice makes progress, and it's, I've always tried to explore new things, I've always tried to do new things, but also kind of sticking to what I'm comfortable with, if you notice my Instagram, it's kind of a bunch of the same thing recently, but I've, I've been exploring some new things recently. And for creature design and storyline, for creature design, I've always loved drawing animals, so I've had a bit of, bit of an advantage since I started young and loved drawing animals and what they looked like and such. For storyline, it's only a fairly recent thing that I've been picking up on how to do. I, For all the things that I've just mentioned before, YouTube's your, my best friend for this. And I use YouTube as much as I can. Yeah. Sorry, I kind of butchered this question. What do you think is needed to make a good analog or horror in general? What type of details do you think would make a horror series turn sour, to say the least? So to make a good horror slash analog horror thing, I would say, like, I can't say for everything, but for me, I am invested in a good story, or a story that gets, like, gets me hooked. Like, I love to learn more and see all the little details that fit together and work. And to make a series turn sour, I would say, like, this is only my opinion, but inconsistency and just making stuff for the sake of being scary? Eh. Like, you can do that, but you can only take you so far. So yeah. What clothing do Mimics prefer to wear? I know they'll probably stick to long sleeves and pants, but do some of them have certain style that they like? I think it would be fun to see a Mimic wearing only designer clothes like Supreme to Hunt. That would be really funny to see Mimic fully dripped out, but they just pick whatever they can get their hands on. But preferably they have like coats and sweatpants and stuff that's really loose and fits on their body well. Did you think your series would get the attention it's gotten? And if so, what would you have done differently? So a little part of me was really hoping that it would blow up like this. And I'm very grateful and very happy that it did, but it was a little too fast for my for my sake, I'd say. If I could do anything differently, I definitely would have spent a little bit more time on the early stuff and made it a coherent and visually pleasing thing to look at. Like, look at these. Like, eh. I would have spent much more time on it. This is one I thought of earlier today that I really wish I'd asked in our interview. Hey, look. Yeah, I wonder who you are. You look familiar. Hmm. When you decide that you want to pick up a new skill for a project, i.e. Blender, what's the first step you take to learning it, and how do you decide when your work is good enough? So, like I said before, the internet is your best, best friend. I study as much as I can, I do as much, like, practice as I can on it, and usually when I'm pleased enough, like, hmm, I believe I'd be happy if this was uploaded. Or, ooh, I think people would really like how this looks when it's uploaded. And that's when I think it's ready. 1. 
Do you plan on making a real movie on Netflix or any other company? I think you should make one. And two, will there be any new creatures? So, for one, that'd be really cool, but I would like to finish up the story before I do any big projects like movies or shows, because this is, like, I'm, I'm just a little, I'm a little baby boy. I, I don't know anything, and I'm still getting the hang of making videos and such. So, I wouldn't want to do anything huge before I finish my first story online, you know. And for two, we will not. Those specific creatures that I've introduced are going to be the only ones in the series, and there won't be any new ones. So, sorry if y'all had, like, high expectations, but we have these guys, and that's it. Sorry. One, how are you doing? I'm doing great, thank you so much for asking. Two, have you thought about getting people to help you with your work for season two and three? Or are you sticking with doing the series solo? So, I might, but I prefer to do things on my end solo, because I know what I'm looking for and I know all the fun little ideas that are going to happen. And I am very, very bad at communicating, especially communicating my ideas and stuff in a coherent form. So, preferably, I'd like to stick it solo, but I will definitely get more people to do, like, voice work and maybe even, like, some film stuff in the future. But all the big stuff like editing and the artwork and Blender and all that such is mostly going to be me. But who knows, maybe something will change in the future, but most likely not. I'm 16 and I love your art style. Is it too late to start drawing? It is never too late to start drawing. If anything, you're at more of an advantage starting where you are now. It'll take a little bit of time, but hey, anything takes time, so might as well start now. Has there been a case where someone accidentally took a mimic as a pet, thinking it was a trimming? It is very unlikely because of how different a, a young mimic versus a trimming look. Because trimmings, they're nice round little creatures who are always afraid and screaming and running away. While mimics are very, very skinny and are very aggressive. So it would be fairly hard to mistake the two. Because one, like a trimming, is very scared and tries to run. The other one wants to rip your face off. So I, th I think you would be able to tell the difference. Did you not get scared of your own creatures or love as scary as they were are? So I don't get scared by my drawings but I try to utilize things that do scare me in my drawings for like example eyes and the teeth and the mouths and such I find that stuff creepy but it doesn't like actually scare me it's just kind of something I mix in that makes stuff scary I try to make things that I find scary but yeah so kind of I guess what ingredients do you actually use to make the crawl pasta I want some of that so the recipe that I used in the video is actually pretty close to what I did in real life. So if you want to replace what crawl is, just use ground beef and sandwich meat and cook it up. But I do recommend adding a sauce because that, that pasta was very dry. But it was very good, so I do recommend it. Will you ever hold a fan art contest for Vita Carnis? I would very much like to. I've been very busy recently. So I haven't had the time to do any sort of art contests like I used to do on my Instagram, but I would very, very much like to. And we might see that in the future fairly soon, maybe, I don't know. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Is it possible to see mimics at a zoo? Like, could they be locked in a cage for visitors to observe? I would say the younger versions might be in a zoo because they eat other types of meat, but adults only eat humans. And they will not eat anything else once they've metamorphosed into an adult mimic. So it'd be fairly hard to keep them in captivity for too long without them, you know, eating people or starving to death. So, only the little guys. Only the little babies. How long do you plan on keeping the series running? So, there are three seasons planned for Vita Carnus. The first season we just completed. The second season should be coming, I don't know, when I finish it. And it'll have it'll be a little shorter than season one, but it'll have longer episodes. And then season three will have only a few episodes, but they're a little longer. But it'll be the shortest season of the bunch. So there'll be three seasons total. 
Two questions. One is lore related, but more for clarification's sake, I suppose. One. How far into the narrative are we at this point? If it is definitive start and end point, i.e. one third, halfway, etc. So I'll answer this one now. Um, I would say we are kind of at the beginning. Because season one was more of a buildup of information and learning stuff and the timeline jumps here and there, yada, yada, yada. But now we are on a much more linear timeline where it will be very much like instead of like jumping from the 1980s to 1990s, it'll be like one linear storyline rather than jumping around. Two, regarding mimics, it says that they can use sound to potentially lure their prey. Does that include human speech or animal sounds? And if so, is it merely parroting those sounds they've heard from humans or animals to make? Or is it a simply a situation of an evolving predator learning and getting better as they develop? If this is a question you can't answer, no worries. This is a question I can answer, so do not worry. So, it is kind of both? Like, they learn and stuff from humans, and they do mimic sounds, and they but they kind of know what they mean. They can't have coherent sentences and conversations and such. They're not that smart. They just know what sounds mean what. Like if a human says, hey, can you come here? They know that means, hey, can you come here? Or if it's like, hey, I need help. They know, hey, that means that person's calling for help. So they kind of know, but not too much. They can't have like a conversation with you. Like they can't do that much. Great work. Looking forward to what comes next. Well, thank you. If you had a pet trimming, what would you name it and why? I do have a pet trimming. Their name is Angelica, and they've solidified on my floor and now can't move. It's kind of sad, but things like this happen. What is the factor in crawl that determines the birth of a trimming or a mimic? It is completely random. We have no idea what it'd be. It could be a trimming. It could be a meat snake, it could be a mimic, it could be a harvester. But statistically speaking, it would most likely be a meat snake or a trimming, because those are the most common types and the other ones are fairly rare. But it's completely random, so you'll never know what you're going to get. <laughs> My question is, which episode of Vita Carnus are you most proud of? Definitely the mimic episode in the documentary. That mimic jump scare scene was just mwah. The build up, all the little details leading up to the jump scare, and then the build up to the jump scare itself was just a perfectly stacked Jenga. And when the Jenga board fell, it was just mmm, it was it was beautiful. In the research documentary for the mimic, it shows that guns aren't a viable option to use against the mimic. But in the mimic the self-defense tape it says that mimics can be halted by bullets. Is this a retcon, or am I misunderstanding something? It is not a retcon. That was done on purpose. I've specifically made this so then it confuses people of what's actually true or not, so you don't actually know how resilient they are. You just have to guess. <laughs> we might find out more in the future. Who knows? Okay, I just need to ask. What's your favorite food? I love country fried steak with mashed potatoes and gravy with some cheesy lobster biscuits. You actually get to see that food in the flavor enhancer commercial at the beginning there. That's my favorite meal right there. See, look, it's very delicious. Not the healthiest thing for you, but it's pretty good. Meat snake, did you really think you can get away with that legendary joke? I need to know. So, initially, it was just kind of meant for a casual name. I was coming up with names for each of the creatures, and I'm like, this is only the third creature in the list. I don't want to give it a super intimidating name. I want something plain and simple. Meat Snake? Ah, oh, that's kind of funny. I'll use that, because it's not super serious, and it's kind of funny. But then it's the internet, and of course they went, ha ha ha, Meat Snake. That's my fault, though. I, sh I should have I should have known. It's the internet. Of course, they would have hooked onto that name real, real hard. It was kind of intentional, but eh. Oh well. How do you do all this stuff? I don't know, man. I, I, it's, it, I've just been 
winging it this entire time. I don't know how I got here. I was just having fun editing and posting spooky videos, and now there's like fucking. Now there's like a hundred thousand of you guys. I don't know. I don't know. We're all pretending. I don't know how I got here. Uh, anyways. How did you make the screaming sounds? It was a combination of online stuff where I just found some free sounds online that I just mashed up and made sound spooky. Or it was people that I got to make the sounds themselves. Sometimes they're even me making that sounds. For example. <laughs> yeah. I truly want to know, are you okay? I love VD Carnus, by the way, I'm just, it's just horrifying and I want to know if you're mentally well. I would say I'm mentally well. I have a little bit of social anxiety, but I don't think that's too bad. It's actually kind of funny because most horror content creators are the opposite of their work. Like they're super bubbly and really nice and chill in real life, but their work is just like, Ugh. And that applies for me too. I'm just I'm just a chill dude. So yeah, I'm I'm doing great. What's your favorite type of invertebrate? I like the bobbit worm. They're cool and scary and weird. These long freaking worms that live in the sand that like have these huge jaws and they go Bleh! to any fish that swim above them and just suck them underground and eat them. Yeah, they're cool. When are you going to do Vita Carnus Season 2? Uh, when it's done. I don't know when that's going to be. When I finish it, I suppose. I don't know. Favorite pasta? I'm a macaroni guy. I love macaroni. But I'd say very, very close second place are those like little shells. Especially with cheese. Mm, real good. What's the name of the song in Facility Zero? That song doesn't really have a name because I made it. I took a bunch of random sounds and beats and stuff and mashed them together in a program. And uh, yeah, there it is. Uh, so it doesn't really have a name. Should I post it? Maybe. I don't know. Probably wouldn't post it here. I might make a second channel for that or post it on Instagram. But... I guess technically it's called background music in my files, so yeah, that. What do you like to do on your free time? I like playing Minecraft. As all the people who know me on Discord know when they see on my little icon, it's like playing Minecraft for like 13 hours. Or another hobby I have is I like to collect brass items like a little goblin and I throw them in a big old pile like a little, a little creature, like a little critter, a little guy, just a little, a little gremlin with his little horde, his goblin pile. Yeah, I like collecting like grass. What happens if you light the creatures on fire? Uh, they would be on fire, and they wouldn't like it very much. When was the last time you jumped? A few seconds ago. How do I type? Bruh, have you seen my spelling mistakes? I have no idea, man. You're asking the wrong person. I also got some last minute questions on Instagram, so let's get to those now. Is pineapple on pizza good? Personally, I do not like pineapple on pizza, but I will not judge anyone who does. Like, you love what you love. What drawer do you keep your socks in? Uh, I keep mine third from the top. Yep. What's your skin made of? Uh, my skin's made of skin. Are you planning on doing more art tutorials? Yes, I do. The next tutorial that's supposedly going to come out next is how to draw teeth and mouths and that sort of such. But, eh, there'll also be some speed paints and other things that aren't Vita Carnus related before Season 2, so... Keep an eye out for those. Do you have a regular job? No. This is all I do. Thankfully, it's paying off, though. Are monoliths dangerous? Yes? 
don't make too much commotion around them, and they'll or they'll whoop your ass. But as long as you're just like chilling, they're they're chilling. Do people try to keep meat snakes as pets? Uh, they kind of do. Like you wouldn't keep it in your house because they smell absolutely terrible. Like, imagine if you take a slab of meat, take some apple cider vinegar, pour it into a jar, put that meat in the jar, seal it away, put it in a spot that's touched by the sun, and then wait a week. Open the jar, take a whiff, yep, that's what a meat snake smells like, so I don't recommend it, but some people keep them outdoors, like mentioned in the documentary, for like butchers and zoos and such, but yeah, probably not. What's the oldest art piece you have that resembles your art today? So, I know I've made a lot older art, but this piece right here, on paper, is the oldest piece that I currently have that resembles the creatures and stuff that I draw today. I know for sure there's older, but I just I can't find it. Well, that's all the questions I could answer for now. Thanks for sticking around and hearing me talk for like... 23 minutes? If I didn't answer your question, I did some interviews a bit ago, and I probably answered them there, so go check those out. I will link them below. Before I end it off, here's the final product of the speed paint. Uh-huh. Very nice. In the description below, you'll find all my stuff. My main platform, Instagram, where I do most of my stuff. My Ko-fi, where you can support me and see a bunch of the exclusive behind-the-scenes work and early access to drawings and all that. My Redbubble, where you can find merchandise of my work. And my print store, where you can get physical copies of my art. Thank you again so much for 100k. That is such a large amount of people, and it's crazy to even think about. Much more to come in the future. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe. And farewell.